What is up, everybody? Justin here with the Real Alaska Podcast, and we're here with Kevin Hedin. Kevin does photography. <laughs> yeah, and some video work, right? Uh, yeah, a little bit of it. Yeah, well, twenty years of it, but yeah, it kind of right. definitely made the shift to photography. Yeah, and with that came, I mean, obviously your biggest accolade to date so far, which was uh, being able to have your stuff published on the national level because you were able to. Uh, photograph and do all the shots for now miss america yep miss america emma broyles our new champion well champion that's kind of a wrong term but uh yeah pageant winner i'm not sure right. <laughs> miss america uh for the state of alaska that's our first win for sure yeah which is huge it is huge big stage big uh you know biggest pageant that uh, most people know about right um yeah i mean that was a pretty neat event i think that uh yeah, being able to like you know photograph um you know just I didn't go to the national event, but I mean, like I did all the stuff leading up to it, you know, our headshots right. and that right. kind of stuff, social media content, whatnot. Um, and, you know, just, I did a lot of stuff for the state title holders as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably only been doing photographs for uh, pageant stuff for about a year, but honestly, like it's been great. Like I think the, um, the gals are, are I mean, super smart. Like they, they come in uh, totally ready and look and have, you know, great photo shoot time and just, I think it's been a good positive experience for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, Emma, Emma came in for a state title. We got her headshot done, and then then she won state, and that was exciting. And I was like, "Wow, that's pretty cool." And yeah. and she'd come in last minute. I think she had scheduled like a couple days prior. Like, you know what? I'm going to do this thing, and she's like, right. she's just like last minute. So like, need to get a headshot and do her state. Title. Then she wins state, you know. And everybody's congratulating her, and that's great. And of course, some of the ones that didn't know that she was coming in as like a last minute thing were kind of like. Oh, dang it, you know, um, but uh, <laughs> she, uh, she she took that state title and then um, came to the national stage. And, you know, one of the things that she told me in the studio was pretty cool. It's like she's like and she's so humble. She's like, I get to meet the next Miss America. And I'm like, well, that could be you. So I'm like, no, right. no, no. I'm just going for the experience. Like, I didn't know there's no way. Like, I mean, right. she was completely just humble about that. And I think that was uh really endearing to hear. And then, um, you know, I didn't know what chances she had, honestly, but I knew that she could sing. I heard her sing at state and I was like, wow, okay. That's not just like, you know, somebody just singing for sin. Like she can sing, she like can she, she, she can really, but yeah, yeah, she can really belt it out. She's got training. Uh, and so then comes the national stage and then, uh, yeah, there's like all these gals from each state and they only pick 10 to actually perform and talk about their social impact initiative. And so she was one of them. I was like, wow, like that's cool. Like that th- she's going to come home super happy that she was, you know, top 10 and right. all this stuff. And I don't think anybody expected that we keep going, you know, the right. you know, top five, then three. top three. Yeah. I mean, people were freaking out. I mean, we all, all the social media, like my phone, everything was blowing up. Like, and I'm watching everybody home going like, Oh my God, you know? And then that final moment, you know, where she wins and then it's just like, it's all over. It's the, this is nuts. You know, Alaska for one, hasn't had a title holder of, you know, from this state for Miss America before. And that's, that's new, but it's also mm-hmm. like, I think just uh, also just happens to be the 100th year of the Miss America organization, which is kind of cool. She gets a special gold crown that no one else has ever had before, you know. That's cool. Uh, you know, and then she wins like the most money that anyone has ever won. I think it was like 100000 Well, actually it was $105,000 winning. But what a lot of people don't know is she's actually getting a wage on top of that. So she's oh. traveling around the country uh, with her social impact uh, initiatives and all these uh, wow. speaking engagements, but she's getting about just about as much money in, in salary as oh, she wow. is in the winning. That's so, cool. so yeah, so she gets to come home after, you know, all this free travel and like 20,000 miles a month of right. travel. You know, so she's getting her Alaska airlines, uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> the mileage thing. Well, will I'm be. sure they're probably treating her pretty good being coming from Alaska oh, on yeah. Alaska airlines. Yeah. yeah. I can just imagine. Absolutely. You know, they're probably planning that up pretty well. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then she's got all this scholarship money that she can continue her education. And I think she's trying to do like become a dermatologist is what she's trying to do. Oh, that's so cool. yeah. So yeah. she's, you know, uh, Medical stuff is obviously very expensive, so she's like, I'm going to use every last bit of that scholarship. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so anyway, that was pretty neat. Um, I think just being a part of the whole pageant system was cool as a photographer. I mean, there's a lot of uh, things I didn't know about pageants before that I know now that I'm really uh, – I respect, and I think it's great. So for me, 
you know, going to these events and we had a Ferrandi event that was pretty cool. I mean, 27 state title holders came up to participate in that. And that was a lot of fun. It's huge. It is huge. I mean, you know, I think you know, Mark, Le- not Mark um, well, we had an MC, uh, K-Will. Oh, uh, Bob Lester. Bo- Bob Lester. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He uh, he did great as an MC. He mm-hmm. MC'd uh, we had a VIP event, which he MC'd at, and um, then we had a big gala at the Captain Cook Hotel. All of that was uh, really put on very well. Um, I have to give a shout out to Bonnie Falk, uh, who set up all those events, and she worked tirelessly for like a couple of months just getting all these events. This entire weekend of Ferrari right. set up because we had a Miss America show, we had the parade, we had a signing uh, session, and all these things, and then yeah, all these parts and pieces put together for an amazing weekend. Amazing homecoming. Right. Um, and I got to photograph, yeah, most of it, which is pretty cool. That's pretty, um, that's pretty cool. And I think just for me, I, I, I enjoyed it for one, but right. also like just being able to um, be part of that event and create some memorable photos mm-hmm. uh, for people I think was uh, really cool. And people have just been coming out of the woodwork to, um, you know, thank me for participating in it, but also just, you know, to share their photos online. And I, it's been very good in the social media world oh for that i can, I can imagine yeah, <laughs> yeah like I mean, that. can't underestimate the power of social media sometimes no. especially when you have a representative from 27 states sharing your photos all of a sudden and then it's like oh my algorithm just kind of just benefited from that oh no kidding yeah, <laughs> yeah. how'd your instagram do off, off uh, all that? yeah quite well uh seems like my um yeah, the the reels and the photos kind of take off from uh you know a couple hundred to a couple thousand and then now it's like six seven thousand views on reels which is pretty cool so yeah uh you know for some that's still pretty low but i think that's for me it's great because i, I don't need like a million i'm not trying to do something you know like nationally here i think what what's kind of cool is that it, it just kind of brings awareness to my brand of photography uh-huh. and what i do and uh-huh. if i keep busy that's you know the name of the game right um so yeah, I mean, I, I think it's been amazing, and I still have a lot to share. I've I've been so busy with other stuff that I haven't even really shared much from that whole weekend. Right, uh, I'm about to, but yeah, it's it's um, it the social media part of it is pretty cool, and you know, um, so but as a photographer, like I'm more interested to see other people share my mm-hmm. pictures than I am to share my own. I, I mean, I think it's important that people can see me and the behind the scenes and what it means to work with me. I mean, that's right. part of the game. But, um, but yeah, just to see other people share their stuff, put, put the pictures that I took of them on their profiles and makes me feel good. I'm like, Oh, they're, they're proud of that picture and their friends and their family are all commenting and saying how much they love that photo of them. I'm like, Oh, that's so cool. I'm glad I was able to do that for them. And I think that's what I get out of it too, is it's not just about, you know, just taking a picture, but it's like empowering people, making them feel good about themselves, Mm -hmm. giving them the kind of image that they're proud of, that they, um, and and yeah, so that 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 experience, I, I can't underestimate how important that experience is. From the moment that uh, somebody even decides that they need professional pictures to the very end, it's all these in between things of um, giving them the the encouragement, uh, the welcoming part of you know coming to my studio and just getting their mm-hmm. picture taken. Yeah, it, it's all it's all important, and that and I've learned that now, like uh, creating an experience the client and you I'm sure you could probably talk about the experience for your clients right. as well it's it's really important people want to know that they're not just pushing a button getting a product that they're being taken through a point A to mm-hmm. point B in the whole whole process in there yeah I, you know? I think people want are willing to pay premium dollar for an experience right yeah. right you know because if they weren't then like we talked about just taking a selfie with an iPhone yeah. Right. <laughs> but there's a difference. Yeah. You know, because obviously the iPhone or, you know, smart smartphone <laughs> is uh, a powerful tool. They they take amazing pictures. I mean, if you had told me 10 years ago that a phone now can do this, I've been called you crazy. Yeah. Right. Um, and I have to compete against that. Right. Now, that's hard, right? I mean, you know, I see it, it, you go to these events even like that weekend, like mm-hmm. – I was giving away a whole bunch of photos too for promotional use. And so people could take my photos and and share them on social media. Right. But I have to be quick. I have to be super quick because they've already gotten pictures on their phone. Mm 
mm-hmm. and they're like good enough, right? And so they're just like sharing, and they might be grainy, but they don't care because they don't know how to make it any better. It's, right. it's the experience, it's the event. So I got to get my pictures in front of them pretty fast because I want them to share mine. You know, like right. that, that's you know part of the game too. So it's like uh, it's already on their phone. They don't have to download it from someone else. So they nope. just got it. Boom, share, share. done. You yeah. know. Um, but uh, I got those photos out the next day. That's pretty sweet for most of them, not all of them. But yeah, and and, and people are like, "Oh my god, you got the photos out the next day? How'd you do that?" Like, yeah, well, I was up till like three a.m. in the morning, <laughs> all night, <laughs> all night. Like, yeah, but <laughs> I um, haven't gone to bed yet. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Um, but you know, those are just the events kind of things. I mean, obviously, for um, more of the other kinds of photos, portraits, that kind of stuff, it's not next day. But um, I think that that is important as far as. Uh, doing events is to mm-hmm. try to get people stuff quickly. Cause you are competing against the iPhone, you know, crowd taking their own pictures. And it, it, it is quote unquote good enough in some cases because the right. resolution is good. But again, something that we kind of touched on um, prior to starting this podcast was that, you know, it's like people don't necessarily hire me because of the resolution of my camera and, no. and people don't yeah. ask me really even what I'm shooting with. Some people do if they're into photography, but mm-hmm. most people could care less. Right. So what is it about, hiring a photographer that matters. Like, why do you even bother, right? Why don't you just hand your friend your phone and take a picture? Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, two things, lighting and posing, Mm -hmm. you know? Uh, If if you don't know how to use the available light or Mm -hmm. lights that you bring to make someone look their best, that's a challenge. Like you've got to, you've got to understand how to, how to work that Mm -hmm. part of it to, to make a great picture. And then also like, posing like you know people say like um i don't know where to hold my hands i don't know what to do with my feet i just i'm just gonna stand here i don't know you know uh the turtle neck yeah yeah (laughs) (laughs) or yeah yeah push your head out no no double chins right Uh um i remember that very vividly from my like okay justin like a turtle i was like this is awkward (laughs) yeah oh yeah there's nothing not awkward about taking pictures sometimes i mean it doesn't have to be awkward all the time but yeah there there, there's some techniques and things that i have people do that are like they they seem awkward but but then when they see the picture i'm like oh i get it that's why we did that yeah (laughs) you know (laughs) yeah um but at the end of the day i think at some point, because I show the my camera a lot, the right. back of my camera a lot to people as we're taking, so that they can see what we're doing mm-hmm. is what it's producing, and then that in turn gives them the confidence, and then they're like not questioning it anymore, and then right. they're just free to just do stuff. Just do it. Uh, I think the the biggest example of that is like um, I do a lot of senior photos, right? Oh, right. Senior photos is like a big category for me. So um, most of these kids have not had a professional you know photo session before, and um, the ones that have still you know, obviously still benefit from being directed and mm-hmm. things like that. But I show my camera a lot to them. And I think that really helps. I mean, you start out, you know, maybe a four hour session going around downtown or, or maybe going around some of these beautiful mm-hmm. areas in Alaska and you just kind of start posing them and doing things. And then they're just kind of like, okay, okay. And then everything's fine. But then you show them the back of the camera and you just show them what you just captured. And you're like, Oh my gosh. Like the, the eyes open up, they're like, I don't believe it. Like what? Like how? What? You know, yeah. and they, they get excited. Right. And then, oh my gosh, the rest of the photo shoot's amazing, you know, because we're right. just like, they're willing to do whatever I say. Like right. just p- this way, my hand over here. Sure. Yeah. You bet. You know, mm-hmm. and then, then sometimes I don't even need to direct because they start to kind of catch on to right. kind of like the, 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 the free, just being able to move, mm-hmm. you know, people start stiff. Right. So right. sometimes just feeling like you can move and. Mm-hmm naturally and capture that as important. So yeah, that, that really, and, and that whole thing is part of that experience that I was talking about. Mm-hmm. Like people want to feel empowered. People want to feel like there's no awkward moments and mm-hmm. they can, that they're getting what they want to get. Um, these seniors, <clears throat> I mean, a lot of them are uh, coming off of two years of COVID, you know, where they didn't really, they had been, had to wear a mask. They haven't seen their friends faces. They've, uh, right. No uh, the, the first year was like all no online. school all online. Yeah. You know, I mean that, that's been hard. It's been yeah. really hard on them. And I keep hearing over and over again, like, you know, as I get more and more seniors, they're like, man, we just want to do something that feels real. We just want to do something mm-hmm. that, that feels good and, and like normal, you know, yeah. they want to feel normal again. And honestly, taking pictures, um, helps that experience has been enabling for so many kids and it's boosted their, confidence and their um 
Yeah, and you know, most of the time, like, like they don't even share a lot of the pictures. Sometimes, I mean, yes, the pictures are important. The, the parents are getting prints and albums and right, of course. wall hangings, all that yeah. kind of stuff. Um, but the kids, you know, they'll they'll share a few here and there. But I mm. mean, to be honest, I hear mostly about their experience is what they got out of it, right? And um, and yeah, of course, you know, they'll share some pictures. But you know, if they get a hundred pictures, they're not sharing all hundred of them on their Instagram. <laughs> so where do they go, right? Well, they end right. up going to an album or things right. like that, and sit on the coffee table, or they take mm-hmm. it with them and for their future husband or future right. spouse or you know maybe their kids someday um but yeah i, I think and, and i i think that's pretty cool that's something that i did not expect getting into photography is that don't underestimate the experience you know i think that's like anything yeah you know people want a positive experience with no matter what they do yeah right right um you know my our job right now we're our experience with buyers, sellers, whoever, yeah, you know, it's all about the experience you provide, right? right. Of course the service, but as well as the experience, you want them to have a positive experience, mm-hmm. fun experience, something memorable, right? Yeah. So that's why we do like the red carpet stuff and mm-hmm. we do all these fu- kind of fun, fun stuff, right? And that's yeah. why we do all the YouTube. It, it's important. It's probably the most important thing. Mm-hmm. It's what, it's what uh, not only keeps them coming back, but it's what, but why they'll tell their friends. Right. You know, like this is who you should hire. This is who you should mm-hmm. go to, you know, because uh, if, if they feel good about the entire process, then they want, they want that rep. They want to see some of their friends have that same experience too, you know? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Especially if you made it fun and engaging and, you know, Comfortable. It's a yeah. big one, especially right. in photography. Because, <laughs> yeah. you know, the personality completely is portrayed, you know, if they're really, like, timid or if they're loose and the personality comes out, right? Yeah. It's, like, it's obvious. <laughs> like, okay, smile, so you know, yeah. um, versus, like, just completely relaxed, let loose, having fun with it, you know, that's... yeah. So you, you want that to kind of come across the, the pictures. Yeah. You and, know, the photos and, you, you know, I, I have a hard time kind of perceiving my own pictures. Uh, I, so I always like to hear from people mm-hmm. like, you know, how, what do you get out of it? What, what are you seeing? Like what, what makes you want to even come to me? You know, right. um, cause I'm just, I'm too close to it, you know? Yeah. And, uh, I, I keep hearing words like, Oh, your photos are so clean. And I'm like, clean. What does that mean? Clean. Oh, yeah. it like, you know, and, and then I started understanding like what they're talking about. Like, um, it's it's like my pictures trying to I don't like to have a lot of distractions in photos so right. I like to have things that are very like whether it's the pose whether it's the um, the, the what's behind them mm-hmm. or you know whatever um, just looks polished I guess right. you know what I mean it's not like overly retouched like I don't mm-hmm. I definitely do not like those overly softened photos that look like you know complete retouching like my goal is to make it like if there's any retouching at all it's going to be very like you shouldn't be able to see that right you know what i mean like i don't want people to say like that's been retouched and that's really Mm -hmm. important to me but yeah i mean having that those polished pictures i think just kind of sometimes is uh makes the photo stand out i guess it's my style you know i mean that's that's something i hadn't really thought about too much like Mm -hmm. what's what's my style what's my look you know right Uh, i i I guess i do want it to look like it kind of popped off a magazine cover you know right make it feel like um, you're the boss and you're, um, I mean, there, there's plenty of um, great photographers who do all kinds of styles, you know, and I, and I see them all, you know, there's um, different looks, different kind of colors, different whatever, you know, uh, mine, I, I guess, yeah, it's very colorful, very mm-hmm. bright, vivid, um, right. true to life. And, uh, but also just capturing moments that I feel are genuine and mm-hmm. fun, mm-hmm. Um, you know, so yeah, it's it's a it's a balance and, and it shifts. It's always shifting, but right. but I think that it's uh, it's fun to create things that um, even though the picture may not be going into a magazine, I think it's fun to create images that look like they would. You know, well, you just never know. Well, yeah, I'm you never. Sure, I'm <laughs> sure you weren't uh, you're I, like man. I I mean, yeah, sure, I've had the luxury of having my photos published a few times here and there, uh, right. but you know, honestly, that that's great. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's not. Um, you know, and I'll make like a little collection in a drawer of like magazines, but it, it's, yeah, that's not really what does it for me. I, I think I just enjoy hearing from my clients and I enjoy right. hearing what it does for them mm-hmm. to know that they're happy with, 
not only the experience, but the pictures and then hearing all their friends talk about it is really more enjoyable to me because I just want to make people happy, mm-hmm. you know, and I, and I really truly mean that it's, um, um, yeah, I mean, everybody likes accolades and awards and things like that, but it's, it's less important to me, right. you know? Yeah. It's yeah. about the service. Yeah. It's about the I mean, service. That's kind of why you got into business, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's a passion for it. Passion. Yeah. It's usually how people get into business. Yeah. I mean, of course there's those who try to follow the, 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 uh, dinero, you know, <laughs> the dollar. Yeah. Well, uh, if I was trying to follow the, din- the dinero, I'd probably be in a different line of business to be honest with you. Right. Yeah. I mean, not to say that I'm, you know, a broke photographer. I mean, certainly like it's working for me. I'm able right. to feed the family and all that kind of right. stuff, but you know, it's a struggle. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think you have to kind of find your, find your worth, figure out what the, um, uh, you know, someone once told me there's basically like three, three levels of photography. Mm-hmm. You've got your, in the middle is kind of like your, your, your premier or premium kind of photographer mm-hmm. uh, on the top is like your luxury photographer. And then on the bottom is like your budget photographer, you mm-hmm. know, like, you know, where are you, you know? Um, and I guess that's, you know, like really kind of comes down to for one pricing, but you know, like you have to sell a reason why you are, you know, a luxury right. photographer right. and or what makes you premium, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, those lines are kind of blurred. I think it just depends on where, you know, you, you feel like you're at. Right. Um, you know, I'm, I'm definitely aiming for that luxury photographer uh-huh. kind of thing, you know, but I'd say I'm probably more priced at the premium level. Right. You know what I mean? Like I'm, 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 a, I'm still affordable, you know, like right. I'm not like astronomical, um, you know, Maybe pricing changes will come at some point, but I think right now, I think I just w- I want to make sure that this is something that works for a lot of people and mm-hmm. still, you know, pays my bills, you know. Right. And so, um, but bottom line is, you know, like I think it's just, uh, you know, this market is not a huge market, and so I do have to do a lot of categories of, you know, not only just seniors, but also like there's corporate headshots, there's, mm-hmm. you know, events, and there's different kinds of things that you have to just take on because they've, they've filled the little holes that in between. Right. right? Um, if I was to just pick one category, I'd, I'd say senior photos would probably be that one category. I have a lot of fun with it and, mm. and, and so do the clients, but, um, yeah, you kind of have to do a lot of different things to make okay. it work. So. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure clientele base kind of determines kind of where you fit to, you know? Yeah. Or am I completely well, off? What, what do you mean exactly? Do you, like client, like what 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 the makeup of our of our community is? No, I mean like a, you know to who you typically shoot, right? Oh, so if you wanted to go more luxury, obviously you would kind of want to concentrate on that. Yeah, clientele base of like more luxury style, like magazine style shoots. You know, obviously now it, you have some yeah. well, I, <laughs> some I, national platformishness. I, I right? think I think your your vibe attracts your tribe. Ooh, that's a good one. You know, yes. um, if you put out photos that are what you intend to shoot mm-hmm. or what you like to shoot, mm-hmm. you will attract that right. group of people. And right. so, um, you know, lately I've been doing a lot of uh, sharing of like pageant related stuff and that's brought a lot more pageant headshots towards me. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm about to kind of shift gears again back into senior photos and post a lot of like last year's photos on there. And I think that's going to, again, well, bring in those, yeah, like it'll, close. Yeah, I know, right? Well, to be honest with you, seniors actually all year round. Uh, really? Yeah, yeah, I've, I've shown them all year round. It just depends. On, yeah, there, there's going to be heavier months than others, but mm-hmm. you know, some people leave for the summer too. So, like, oh, uh, right. maybe they don't think about their senior photos until like right before school hits or mm-hmm. as school hits. But they want the good weather. They don't want the winter photos. So you don't want spring break up. There's no. It's all dirty yeah. and. There's no leaves on anything. Yeah, the this is this is <laughs> this is kind of the worst time, <laughs> honestly. But um, you know, the nice thing about um, hiring someone like me any time of year is that I know how to get around that. Right. You know, like I can find those pockets. I can. Uh, I do a lot of traveling around. I do kind of checking out where the best spots are for every part of the year. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe we go up on flat top. You know, and really get that winter scene all over again. Or mm-hmm. you know, maybe we're like uh, somewhere in. Um, you just get these maybe the leaves on the trees, but kind of like these little willows and things like that, or right. just you you find these pockets and of, of beauty. Um, I mean, I don't want to give it all away, but like there's this one spot in like a Klutna tail race where the water is always not frozen, like it's always coming off. The, yeah, well, because yeah. it's yeah, it's, there's a Klutna lake, and then you right. got this treatment plant, and the water comes out, and it goes into this beautiful bridge, right. and then you get, you have this perfectly winter scene with this 
blue water that just kind of comes right out from there. It's just gorgeous, and it's really no secret. Most pro photographers know about it, but, um, yeah. So and, and then, of course, you've got, like, there's some indoor locations that mm-hmm. can look pretty amazing, too. So, right. And I think that's what a lot of people will when they hire a photographer, they, they hope that they have some of these locations because well, they, they can't always think about, oh, where do I go shoot, right. you know? And maybe that scares people away from shooting during certain seasons because they think there's no place to shoot. But little uh-huh. do they know. Yeah, yeah. Then I, and tricks. Then I show them, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. Well, that's cool. Um, you know, so obviously the, you know, obviously with, with the Third Alaska podcast, mm-hmm. we're – concentrate on business yeah and the why of business mm-hmm. and why people do what they do yeah because really i i enjoy the stories i think the listeners who listen mm-hmm. really enjoy like the why yeah you know um so kevin yeah what's your why my why 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 what got you into why why do i why do i even do this yeah yeah well i, I think, think <laughs> we, we cover a little bit of it yeah just a little just, bit i think it's you know i mean obviously it's a passion thing, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I enjoy it. I enjoy the experience that um, that I give to people and, and what I get in return. I think it's just, you know, I mean, sure, it's financial. We all are in business for, for well, the finances. Right. But, I mean, in terms of why this, I think it's just, uh, you know, I thought I was going to be a computer science major of all things, like when I was in college or whatever. I mean, I was always good at computers, and I thought, oh, well, that's my path. And right. you you get to a certain point, you're like, oh, this is getting pretty hard. <laughs> Coding is hard. <laughs> you Your know? phone's almost that now. I mean. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. I mean, I was I was in college. I remember at Southern Oregon University, and I remember going, I was the computer, one of the computer science lab, you know, helpful mm-hmm. people, whatever, helping other students. Uh, at the same time, I was learning HTML code and building websites. Mm-hmm. That was mm-hmm. when HTML was really simple. Right. Like, you know. Not so much. Simple no. code for color or a bar across the screen right. or whatever. Yeah. Well, it got complicated really fast. And I was like, do I want to do this? Is this what I want? Is this really the path? I'm, you know, like I was technically um, proficient, but maybe not at that level. Right. And so I was like, what else would I like to do? So, I mean, I had already gone to um, art college in Arizona mm-hmm. and I enjoyed that. Um, but uh, only did that for like two years. And, you know, I ended up coming back to Southern Oregon to, to finish things out. I think having that photo background, but also having people around me that were also into photography, having an art teacher in high school that really taught me about, you know, just pick up a camera and, and, and shoot and just, you know, teaching me the, the basics and being able to shoot for my, my own high school yearbook. All those kind of things led up to me like kind of going back to that and like mm-hmm. realizing like, oh, maybe I like the art side of things. Maybe mm-hmm. maybe the computer stuff is, is always going to be there. Right no matter what I do, mm-hmm. maybe I should just focus on, on what I love to do. And I think that was um, a pretty cool moment for me. I came up to Alaska. The first thing I did was like ran down a Stewart's photo and mm-hmm. bought a camera. Cause oh, I'm like, I love that place. I, yeah. I mean, they got everything and I, you know, this is back in the film days, of course, you know, no digital yet, but I spent a lot of money on film and testing and working with different, uh, <coughs> working with different people to, create my portfolio and um, I was spending a lot of money on that. <laughs> but I think it, you know, it was still, it was, it was a passion, but mm-hmm. I didn't know how to turn that into a business right. at the time. It took a little bit. I think I ended up going into, um, you know, video right. work because I, I saw there was some more money potential mm-hmm. there and work for TV stations and independent production companies and then advertising agencies and that sort of thing. And that I built an entire career off of, you know, um, still did photography on the side, but I did it for myself. I did landscapes. I did, I shot everything. I shot astrophotography. I shot, you know, whatever, just n- not so much people. I mean, I shot my own kids, of course, right. but yeah. Then kind of circled it all back to realizing like, Hey, you know, this is actually pretty fun and I mm-hmm. should really kind of see what, uh, comes of it. And I think it was through last few years of, you know, COVID and changes with the, uh, advertising agency mm-hmm. world and not being able to count on that money as much anymore because of changes in, in, in the economy and, right. and, and how it affected them, which affected me just kind of brought it all back to like, mm-hmm. Hey, you know, maybe the now's the time to really go full, you know, hundred percent photography. And I right. think that, yeah. So sometimes it takes a little bit of adversity. It takes a little bit of hurdles to mm-hmm. realize like what you want to do. And I think mm-hmm. that, you know, the passion's always been there, but 
kind of get over those hurdles and that little bit of a push from behind. And then like, yeah, then both feet, you know, get a studio, get all the gear you need, you know, and spend a lot of money. Oh God. <laughs> and it's then, easy to do in photography and video business. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. I want to get me started there. I mean, I have uh, you know, you, you have the gas syndrome like I do. You know what gas syndrome is? Oh, what? go ahead. Explain it. Uh, most likely <laughs> gear acquisition syndrome. Oh yes. hundred <laughs> percent. So you have gas. I have gas. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like, you know, Ooh, shiny thing. Yeah. You know, especially when you walk into Stewart's. So shout out to Stewart's yep. for taking a lot of my money. Yeah. <laughs> but <I know. laughs> uh, um, it's, you know, man, they make cool stuff, man. It is cool. But, you know, here, here's the thing, though. It's like cool. It can be cool. But I always look at it like, okay, is this going to save me time, save me money? Or, you know, I, I need to look at it from an investment point of view. Right. And sure, have I bought things that I probably should have? Yeah, well, I think we all have. But yeah. but I really take the time and the care to research and look, making sure that something's going to actually be beneficial mm-hmm. for my business. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, I, I do pride myself on that because I do make sure that you know that's um, it's a really important thing to have. Is like you know your your gear is important, um, but your livelihood and your, your, uh, bottom line is more well, important. Of course. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. You don't want to uh, go broke and then you can't do anything. Right. Yeah, exactly. So. I mean, I've, I'm inspired actually by another photographer who's been in the business since the, um, the eighties. He's, he's a corporate photographer here in Alaska and, uh, his name is Chris. He's, he's actually done an amazing job with his gear. Like he has, his, uh, flashes or his strobes, his camera stuff is not all the latest tech. Uh, it and it's probably not even like the last generation or the generation before that. It's it's kind of dated, but he makes it work. And he right. he thought about his investments. Mm-hmm. And he knew what he needed, and that's exactly what he needs. And he doesn't need any more, any less. Uh, and he makes it work, and he's continuing to make it work, and it's impressive. And I'm like, wow, like that just reminds me that like I don't need to be chasing after that latest and greatest. I mean, sometimes there are some yeah. reasons, like very specific reasons, if you're doing something that you may need, but I mean, he's way more successful than I am, right. and he is doing amazingly well, and he is very frugal, and he and he does it, um, yeah, consistently. So I just have a lot to learn from him. <laughs> I have been, uh, you know, because we do a lot of video, right, more than just photography. We don't really do too much photography. Yeah. Obviously, like, a lot of what we do is video. Sure. And, of course, DJI came out with that new Ronin oh. Ford. 4d camera oh the uh it's, the one that uh it's got the gimbal attached it's yeah got the camera and the and the gimbal oh all in yeah one. where you can walk along and, yeah, it, and it shoots an 8k you got one of those no no, no i, I oh. wish <laughs> like mike wishes <laughs> mike's over here like yeah man get that <laughs> yeah. but uh it's it's for, rad for anybody that doesn't doesn't know that camera is you got to go look it up what's it called again the dji that dji ronin camera but what ronin but Ronin what though? I think it's the Ronin 4D. Uh, I think it's Ronin. This you'll okay. DJ yeah, it, it's 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 rad. I mean, it's a camera. Yeah. It's the gimbal built in with a four axis system. Here we go I mean, on the gas syndrome again. Here, see, I know, I know, man. <laughs> it's, they have a 4K and an 8K model, and I'm like, oh my goodness, I want this so bad. It's yeah. also like 7,500 bucks. Yeah, right. So, right. Yeah. I mean, there's a, you know price point hurdle there i think yeah i think to make it worth it but i think for those like us that enjoy gear it, it's hard to resist that it's it's they're they're fun they're tools um and we we want them to work in our business mm-hmm. they don't always fit in our business but, <laughs> but, we, but we want them to work so we buy them anyway. and we'll make it fit <laughs> yes um but yeah i think it's important for any business person to really just um you know it's okay to look it's okay to try it's okay to borrow and rent mm-hmm. and and uh but yeah you know it's like uh, and of course you've got the means you just want to like have a bunch of toys go for it, you know, but if right. you're, but if you're just trying to run a business, um, you know, for just what you need, you know, it's important to do your research. It's mm-hmm. important to know. Yeah. I mean, I, um, uh, have more than what I need. I've, you know, I'm always looking for, you know, stuff like sometimes that might be helpful or like props or whatever, right. you know, but, right. um, even then I like, I'm like, most of the time I don't really need props or anything like that. Right. You know, I'm pretty much fine with like, you know, simple backdrops and whatnot. But yeah, mm-hmm. it's, you, ha- you have to kind of just like stop looking sometimes. Just like, okay, Amazon's are always right there to I click know. away. <laughs> it, it's, it's too, you know, obviously consumerism in America is a, is a complete <laughs> thing. I fall right into that trap of, you know, always looking for really cool. Of course, you know, the new, you know, um, 
drone comes out, oh, and yeah. then this comes out, and then of course they sell you on the cool shots that the drone do, and, the, and you know the follow features and all this stuff. And I'm like, that would be rad. I think I can use it doing this right. And you're just constantly in this like battle. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, of need versus want. <laughs> with with your interest in tech, I'm I'm surprised you're not using these drones, these cameras, like shooting your own your own real estate. But mm-hmm. you, you do you do some of your own stuff? Do you photograph some of your own pro- your homes, or do you just we, like farm that out? Or we farm out the photography in like Matterport and 3D walkthroughs. But we're uh, going to be doing a lot more of our own video walkthroughs, like yeah. especially agent forward. Like you know, actual walkthroughs throughout the home yeah. and doing some of these kind of luxury tours, right? Uh, mainly just for YouTube. Yeah, All right. Really trying to branch and grow our our channel there. Um, you know, so that's kind of the idea behind it. But right, right. you know, really deep dive into some of these these shorts as well. Like I guess YouTube has shorts now mm-hmm. and then the reels and TikTok and <laughs> you know, it's just yeah. It's like you always have to have content, right? I mean, that that's, yeah. that's the name of the game is keeping a regular, regular and steady stream of content for your, Constantly. for your, your potential clients. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, it's, yep. it's important. It's like what, it's like if you just take a short break um, and nobody hears or sees from you, it's like people aren't just, people are not proactive. Nope. You know, you know what I mean? Like that, yep. that's what I found about, even with my business, people are not proactive about searching you out unless they have an mm-hmm. imminent right. d- deadline yep. that they have to go find somebody. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you haven't been top of mind for like the last month, then you are not top of mind. Right. <laughs> You're going to get left behind. Mm-hmm. Um, recommendations obviously go a long way. Yeah, referrals. P- 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 referral people yeah. always ask their friends and that, that helps, right? Yeah. Um, that That's a big one. Um, but you know, that Google search is going to, just pull up a bunch of different people yep. and, and you're going to be like, I don't know. This one's got 20 reviews, all five stars. This one's got 20 mm-hmm. reviews, all five stars. What's the difference? I right. don't know. Like if you don't have any basis for that. Um, so that social media content, that regular yeah. pattern of like, what's in it for them? What, mm-hmm. what, why should they even bother seeking you out? You know, mm-hmm. that's important, but man, it's time consuming. It's very time consuming. It's actually really impressive. How do you how do you balance that? How do you manage your? So I mean, I'm turning the tables on you now. How do you manage your social media? <laughs> because like I I have a hard time keeping up, man. Yeah, uh, you know we have a social media team okay. attached to our company, right? So maybe I need your team. Yeah, so it's <laughs> you know because I, I you know I was doing it by myself for a while, mm-hmm. and I realized that that was like my largest time suck. And I'm just not very good at Canva. <laughs> like Canva is actually pretty easy to use, but there are people who are better at it than I am. Yeah. And I want to be good at real estate and running a business. Yeah. I don't want to be good at every aspect of my business. Yeah. Right. I should know about it. Mm-hmm. You know, right. But I don't need to be a social media expert. I don't need to be a Canva expert. I don't need to be a video expert. Right. That's, that's why I hire people. That's really <laughs> important. That, that, that right. Would, yeah. That's um, really important. Social media was the biggest one to pull off my plate, probably, mm-hmm. because you were on Twitter, yep, LinkedIn, okay, YouTube, wow. TikTok, <laughs> business pages of Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Oh, and then you have your business profiles and your personal profiles and personal too. profiles. Yeah, so right. I'm like, man, there's like, you know, you do one post and it goes out to like thirteen plot, thirteen things, right? <laughs> I'm like, dude, how do you manage this? Yeah, is it one post? You know, and then of course Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, mm-hmm. LinkedIn. All have a different layout. Yeah. And some square, some tall, some right. wide. Yeah. Yeah. So you're like, man, so I have to take this one post and do five different variations of it. Oh, and TikTok has a new stories mode. So I know I saw that. Yeah. Another, yeah. another place to post your story. Yeah. And live. Once you get past a thousand subs on TikTok. Do right? you have live? No. Oh. I'm at like 812. Uh. So follow my TikTok. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll do it. I'm on that. <laughs> um, you know, so it's it's really, you know, that to me was like finding someone that was able to kind of handle that, especially yeah. for the team. Right. You know, team's like, hey, I just sold this. Here's a picture. Please create this. And they go blah, 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 across all the platforms. Yeah. I'm like, uh, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. And, you know, for me, like I, uh, man, I, I think the hardest part is um, capturing those behind the scene moments because I'm always like, you know, taking the pictures and and people tell me like they love to see the behind the scenes, even sometimes more than the actual photo. And so like, you notice that too with our filming. Yeah. That people will gravitate more 
to the behind the scenes of our filming. You know what I think pictures. that is. You know, I don't. And they I, do the actual video. I think there's. I think there's two camps on. I think. I think some people will actually like that because they 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 like the to see the technology that you're using. Right. But but honestly, like most people see that behind the scenes as being the more genuine part. Yeah, real of the more real part. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, a final photo can have a lot of tricks up its sleeve. A lot of editing. A lot of editing. Yeah. But that behind the scenes is a little more raw. It's a little bit more like, yeah. oh, what really happened? It what? And they want to see what their experience is going to be like mm-hmm. too. So if they see someone else having fun or enjoying something, right. they might that might be relatable to them. Mm-hmm. So that's really important. And, and I think that's, um, and so I've employed a couple of techniques of like mounting little GoPros on my real camera oh, right. uh, or, or being really a dork and mounting it on my chest, you know, oh, there you go. <laughs> or uh, sometimes a 360 camera is helpful too. Oh, those are cool. Yeah. Just uh, having one of those, mm-hmm. um, maybe I'll plant it down on the ground or something like that just during a, yeah. a session. But um, yeah, I, I try to do that because uh, unless I got like, if I'm doing a senior photo, I'll have like, you know, mom takes some, you know, right. picture. I'm like, Hey, can you get me in there too? Cause, and I love to, you right. know, get that afterwards. But yeah, having the behind the scenes is really important. Um, and I try to do little videos with my senior clients, you know, a little kind of, you know, just one-on-one, you know, mm-hmm. uh, how'd your session go, blah, blah, blah. And we talk about what's going on and, and they love that too. And they, well, they, they, and they, they share, share that. The reels. They yeah. share it on their stories. Like, yeah. It's, it's, impressive. it's, it, it's, it's fun. And I, and I, I think I got into my own head of making everything that I post better and better and better. Like it, it's, it's become a point where it's like, now I don't hardly post because I'm like, Oh, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. It's not good enough. Just have to share it. Yeah. I have to. Yeah. You don't care if it's perfect. Right. I just want to see it. Right. And I, and I think that's, that's it too. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm in my own head. Right. right. You know, cause I'm like, I don't want to post that real that flops right but like you have to accept that right and you have to just be like you know what it's more important to just have c- consistency mm-hmm. and be yes. out there and put yourself in there too yep. that's another thing and i've I got to get better about that but and people actually prefer the stuff that's not so edited yeah they actually want to see you be the real and kind of make a mistake or you know yeah. whatever else or it's relatable because yeah, it's nobody, re- nobody's yeah, perfect, yeah, no one's perfect. everybody yeah. wants to just be like Hey, they're real people too, you know? Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's a tendency. I have kind of a perfectionist kind of mm-hmm. mode, you know, I get in. It's like, especially when it comes to editing photos, I'm like, Oh, mm-hmm. it's gotta be just perfect, you know? But yeah. And, and those serve a purpose, right? I mean, right. for that magazine, you know, pop right. out kind of photo, but yeah, yeah. I mean, to, 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 to wow people into your world, you want to get them involved in like, what makes you tick? What is yep. behind the camera? What yeah. is the process and the experience and all that stuff? And then behind the scenes, as you know, just definitely are very, very important. And that, that mm-hmm. goes for a lot of industries actually. Yeah. People, people just want to see it. Yeah. want to see how it's made. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's like the whole TV shows on how it's made, right? Yeah, right. Like the whole behind the scenes <laughs> stuff, you know. It's fascinating. Yeah, it is. yeah. It's 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 a, it's a peek into a world that we're not necessarily familiar with, mm-hmm. and so we want to know like what's the process. Yeah, right. yeah. It's very very cool. If they saw behind the scenes of a real estate office, it'd probably just be a bunch of like hair pulling, <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. just on the phone all the time. <laughs> like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> or they see me at my desk with you know a shot of whiskey. They're going like, oh, I'm gonna make it through this session. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, why did you, you know, or why did I do this? Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, I've had plenty of those moments. Uh, like, like, you know, <laughs> yeah. Um, like, is there an undo button? Please do undo, undo, undo. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, they have. I've there's been so many times where you're like, you know, I, I get excited about what's going on. Maybe the, mm-hmm. maybe there's something that's happening that's really cool. Really, maybe it's the event, the person. Right. I don't know. Maybe it's some kind of situation. You start clicking away and you start ignoring all the other stuff that right. you should have been paying attention right. to. And then you get home, you're like, why didn't I pay attention to? what was in the scene or mm-hmm. what, or the position of something, you know, and I was like, man, I just got to stop and take a look. And that's, I, I've come a long way. Mm-hmm. Like I've, I've really slowed down my shooting. Now I used to just take too many pictures and now I'm just like, slow down, look at the scene right there. You know, the person doesn't care that you're taking like a thousand, they don't want, they don't need a thousand pictures. They, they want 50, you right. know? So take your time. And I think that's um, something that probably is the biggest takeaway for, for me from like just years of experience to realize that like I don't need to just shoot so fast, just slow down, take your time. Right. Be me- kind of more methodical about it. Yeah. 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 But, yeah. but it's fun though. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change what I do. I think it's uh, a great um, 
career and it's it's growing. Yeah. And I uh, appreciate your business. Well, you guys do a great job. Thank you. So, I mean, everybody I send to you is always a super ecstatic working with you oh. on just a, the experience of, and kind of making it fun and entertaining and, you know, comfortable. Nice. You know, and then, uh, I try. obviously the product at the end, they're like, Oh my God, it turned out so great. You know? Yeah. Um, so Sweet. I'm, I'm a cheerleader for you, Kevin. Yeah. Oh man. You're, <laughs> you're, you're like the best cheerleader I could ever have asked for. So, um, yeah, like, really, go Kevin, go Kevin. <laughs> 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 really do appreciate. Yeah. Not only the business, but also just the relationship. I mm-hmm. think, uh, even just being on this podcast and, um, you know, just knowing you just beyond other things. I think it's really cool. I, you know, the connections we make mm-hmm. in our community that are really important. And, um, yeah. and yeah, you're, you're a rock star in my book. Oh, thanks man. Yeah. I mean, that's why we do this podcast is to connect with businesses. Yeah. You know, obviously we have a business, connect with businesses and then listen to the story. Yeah. Let you tell it. <laughs> right. Because it's almost like a behind the scenes podcast mm-hmm. of business in Alaska. Right. right? And, and we've had such an outpouring of like from businesses and our listeners mm-hmm. just, Oh man, I didn't have no idea. Like that's so cool. You know, mm-hmm. especially with COVID having people kind of talk about the impact of business and, you know, and thank God for the EIDL and PVP and SBA funding for, for certain individuals and restaurants and the tourism industry and all that and stuff. And so be kind of telling that story yeah, and how people got started and the struggles they have because mm-hmm. People just see obviously businesses and this growth and all these wins and but you don't really see like the the man like I was at a point of failure almost mm-hmm. and I was about to give up right and right. Then something just clicked right and then my business took off but mm-hmm. I was like there mm-hmm. you know or they failed multiple times and now finally and then finally something caught you know right and so it's it's cool to hear the stories it, to me it's. That's that's why I love doing this part of it. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. I, I think it's great. I think it's. Um, yeah. I, I have big hopes for your podcast. I think it's great because uh, I'll be listening, and watching. Yeah. <laughs> more people <laughs> well, as they come through. That, here. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh it's it's been fun. We've had a great time doing it. Like I said, a lot of, a lot of people coming on in the future. So mm-hmm. hoping to have some some other organizations and of course more businesses. And so every week we have someone new, nice. you know, and tell a story and. Tell that Alaskan cool. business well, experience. I am honored to be on your show. Well, thanks for coming on, man. Yeah. So you want to give a, a quick plug or a shout out to anybody or? Oh, gosh. Um, well, it's my family who's, you know, tirelessly supports me and, uh, you know, making sure that I do what I do. And, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, putting up with uh, all the late nights, the 24-hour <laughs> working uh, schedule. And, yeah, what else? I mean, um yeah, I mean, turn the plugs. I mean, we're already plugged Stewart's for a great supply of camera gear. But, um, <laughs> yeah, no, I think yeah, that's pretty How much about it. where can people find you? Uh, yeah, so, uh, of course, I'm on the typical social media sites like Instagram and Facebook. Uh, just search up Kevin Hedin Photography. And if, if you need to know the spelling, it's H-E-D-I-N. So, yeah, Kevin Hedin Photography. Uh, yeah, Instagram is a great place. Uh, I have a website, just kevinhedin.com. And uh, you can get started and just fill something out. I'd be glad to just start a conversation with you if you just need to learn more about what I offer. Awesome, man. Well, I really appreciate you coming on. Yeah. If you guys need any photo stuff, this guy right here is the man. Awesome. Thanks. Bye, buddy. Thank you. Thanks, Justin.